Hey guys, this is my Yapa 365 Pro. I said I was going to do a video on it months ago, but I've been meaning to do one and I finally put 100 hours on it. So here's the video so many of you have been waiting for. So I got this machine in I think August, late August. And so it's a three, Yapa 365 Pro. I got a 14 foot out feed conveyor with it and a three, three deck, what is this, triple beam live deck. Not really a live deck, but it's more of a gravity deck. Um, and that hooked, that's all hydraulic hooked right into the table. It's got dual rollers on the table. Uh, so what I did when I first got it, I didn't opt for the road package because I knew I was going to leave it stationary. So I saved a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars by not getting the road package. And what I did to help keep it clean underneath here was I put it on pressure treated six by sixes that sit on pressure treated plywood, so I can take your old pitchfork and. I can clean under it way easier, scrape underneath it, super easy. So it's extremely easy to clean underneath there. And we'll, uh, I'll kind of show you now how I run it. So when the hood's closed, you can do all the controls, in feed, back up the conveyor belt down with the saw up down with the splitting knife adjust the pressure and then when you when you're feeding the saw down and let's say it lands weird what I do is I keep the saw down I look at where it landed and if it landed wrong I pick up the hood and the minute the hood gets to that point the saw blade stops the chain stops everything stops if the knife was or if the splitting wedge was going forward that everything stops and at first I was kind of hesitant of this feature and me and my father were kind of going to look at disabling it but I do not recommend that it's there for a reason this thing's right in your face if something were to happen you get really messed up so it and we thought it was going to be a pain in the butt but it's actually super handy we use it sometimes for just stopping this to be able to do something in here um so it's super easy to maintain it uh so the chain comes off with two 13 millimeter bolts and a four four millimeter allen set screw to loosen the chain up and that's super easy to change out I got seven chains with it, so I have. I think I've sharpened one of the chains once. So in a hundred hours, I've used seven chains. I hit a couple pieces of nails on two of them, but that's it. It's super efficient with bar and chain oil. I use um, the county line stuff from Tractor Supply. I get it on sale at five dollars a gallon, and I go and buy ten gallons at a time. And I think in the 100 hours, I've used three gallons of bar and chain oil. So it's super efficient on bar and chain oil. Uh, the knife, I got a six-way knife here. I got a six-way knife and an optional eight-way knife. But with the wood that I split, we would screw it down to get it to a manageable size. And... We don't even use the six-way knife. We just use the four-way knife. It's fast, and once in a while you get a piece or two that you have to resplit. So, to change the knife out, you would lower the knife all the way down, and then there's a pin down here. There's a pin down here that you pull, then you pull this pin out, and the Oh, 
So you pull that pin out, and then what you do up top is you flip this up, and all you do is just pull it up and spin it about 60 degrees, and it pops right out, and then you can put a different sized one in. And the knife has been holding up pretty good. It got a lag bolt or something and chipped a tooth off, but or a little chipped a piece off when I ground it flush again. With so with the seven foot with the seven foot conveyor that you get, you don't get the slew option. It's just straight off the machine. But I opted for the 14 foot conveyor and it's got a manual slew option. So this locks it in place and you just pick it up and spin it. So now I can throw that other basket up. But what I used to do is I just hold it open with that so I can just kind of keep it in place wherever it is and then I use a piece of pipe to hold it so I can get it in the middle. But I usually just leave it up all the time. Now, once in a while, I'll get a piece, a knotty piece stuck in there. And what I found the best way to do it is I just take this splitting wall and you hammer down on top of the piece then you go down with the wedge and bring it back up all the way to the top and you hammer down again and it usually pops it right off it's super easy to get pieces off that get stuck on there so now we'll walk around to the other side oh another thing is so when I get <coughs> pieces that are knotty or I don't split. I have a Timberwolf TW5 over there that I use. And that's where all the nasty knotty pieces go. For pieces that I don't want to split again, <coughs> I pull them off the conveyor and just put them in here, then I wheelbarrow them over there and stack them up. So, with the 14 foot conveyor, I noticed that the conveyor speed is super fast. And I didn't like it. So I called Bob at Metz's. I said, hey, do you have anything that can fix this? And he said, oh yeah, I got a little module, bolts right on the motor of the conveyor, and you can adjust the speed. So after I had the machine, I think I had 10 hours on it. I was like, ah, oh, that's the speed of this conveyor isn't gonna work out. So I bought the speed adjuster, and all it does is it bolts you take these two quick connects off the motor and it this block this silver block bolts right onto the motor and you adjust the speed just like this and you can dial it super slow or you can no resistance at all keeps the factory speed so from the factory these come with a six gallon tank and that just wasn't enough for me i was able to get i think three cord on a six on a whole tank six gallons of fuel so <clears throat> I bought a 12 gallon one and since I'm not driving it down the road I don't have to worry about strapping the fuel tank down it just kind of sits here and that's been awesome I can pretty much go all day on a tank of fuel and what I bought in the meantime was this 60 gallon transfer tank that's got its own pump nozzle power on it and that's been awesome for transferring fuel to this so I only have to go to the store I think every three weeks to get fuel so from the factory these come with a Honda GX 690 which I think is 25 horsepower 20 horsepower that's been awesome typical Honda no problems so that's been great uh, what I did so these just come Usually they have the road axle on them, so the sawdust just comes right out and you move it around. But since mine's stationary, I wanted to do something with the dust collection. So I got a generator over here and I got an electric sawdust extractor. Yeah, it just pulls the sawdust right out and then dumps it into this IBC tote. And that's where I collect it and I take it from there and I dump it out. Um, that's pretty much it on the 
So on this live deck, it's got this triple for bean thing. And when I take the lever and I push it forward, this piston pushes this down and these logs roll onto the rollers. And these rollers are powered with the infeed conveyor. So however fast that conveyor is going, these rollers are going. So that's great, it ties right into those. It's been perfect. I had one problem with this pillow block baron. I think I rolled two logs on it when I first bought it and it exploded. So I called up Metzas and they sent me a new one in two days. Super easy to change out. So that's that. And so what I do is, so I split these logs up, the big logs that won't go through there. That'll take a 14 inch piece. I split it up with our excavator and the wood screw and then I load it with the log trailer. And I can split, I think that'll hold three cord. This will hold about half a cord on it. So I can, I can split probably close to five cord in a day. And I used to be able to do that with the log splitter too, but it's a lot of manual labor. Now I can go inside at the end of the day and my back's not hurting. So that this thing's been great on helping me. I'm young, so I don't want my back to go bad. My back to go bad by the time I'm 30. So one thing that I've noticed with this machine is when you get this last off-cut piece, it's hard to tell what length it is because of this this measuring tape on the back side wears off it wore off in like 20 hours so i had to figure out something to get the 16 inch length that i needed so what i did was i added red marks everywhere so it's easier so if you got a piece on here the end of it the edge of it will stick right here so it's easier just to look at this right here instead of taking your head and looking underneath the spring loaded clamp so i added these red marks here every 16 inches or 16 whatever the kerf is of the saw blade i added the kerf of the saw blade so when it gets right here i'll look um so if it's hanging over four inches i'll move the end right here cut off the four inches take i take the piece out throw it in the off cut pile which is what i use to burn and heat our house and then i can go along and finish up the rest of the log mm -hmm. so since i split a lot of these like weird triangular pieces um a lot of the times this stuff will fall off the pile and sometimes i have to take it by hand and you know bring it down to get it get it to where i want it to flip it and with it when they fall on there i notice that sometimes i i got a log right pickaroo i think they call it and i just gotta hit it on the side and i just pull it to me and in and um that's kind of how i solve that problem but i only have that problem with these split pieces this thing absolutely loves round wood if you have nothing but 14 inch or less 14 inch or smaller round wood this thing absolutely destroys it when i get a piece or two that's like eight inches in diameter i love it because i can split a 12 foot piece in a matter of a minute and these pieces take a little bit longer because of how they land in here so a problem that i run to is when you get that piece like that when it pops in there sometimes it'll land off centered like that and if you take a look take a look in here when that comes to split you're gonna get a big piece in this corner so sometimes when I get a log that isn't positioned right you know I have to take the piece and then do that so it sits in the middle and and it works perfectly fine. And what I noticed 
with those type of logs is that sometimes they don't hit the knife right and one of them came up here and got in between there and it pulled this right out so I had to take that off bend it for maintenance sometimes you have to clean underneath the ram and to do that there's a 17 millimeter bolt here and right here and what you do is you flip this up you slide that pin out to lock that and then you put that pin right there and this lifts up with a little bit of force then you lock that like that and now you have access to the underside come over here so so another pro little problem that i had with it is all this because i'm splitting split wood i get a lot of chaff and shavings and it was at like i think 60 hours it got caught underneath the ram and i had to flip this thing up and clean it underneath the ram which wasn't a bad problem and then another thing is this is what stops it so when you so right now it's in the neutral position and that pushes it forward and the ram comes out and this tab here hits this tab and it pushes it forward and that's what sends it back and I had a problem with this tab because of all the stuff that was built up in here that I didn't know about it bent that tab so I just had to bend that back a little bit and other than that I've had no problems just this this part was my mistake I just it was I was not used to the machine I didn't know the machine yet so this here was my mistake but this is just like a maintenance thing like the oil so it's just something that I got to keep up on every 50 hours I just got to pop this hood and clean it out but it's pretty it's a pretty awesome machine the the reason I went with this machine is because of the wood that I get I saved probably thirty thousand dollars with getting the wood screw and a smaller processor be able to process the big woods if I bought a processor that could process the big wood I'd be looking at seventy eighty thousand and this alone cost me twenty seven thousand and then the wood screw was six thousand so I saved probably close to forty thousand dollars um, I'm lucky enough to have an excavator to put the wood screw on and I'm lucky enough to have a log trailer that I can load the table with but these do come optional with a ground lift where you can roll the log on to a lift and it kind of rotates it up and then you can feed it in but that's pretty much it if you guys like the video leave a like and comment on something maybe you'd want to see next if you guys want to see some videos of this running, let me know and I'll make some videos of it running. Thanks.